Balakolya is located on the western end of the N5 Balahadrin to Skromo road project, less than 8 kilometers northeast of the Rathcrohan complex, one of Ireland's preeminent archaeological landscapes. Rathcrohan is known in myth as the royal site of Connacht, the seat of the legendary Queen Maeve, and the starting point of Ireland's most famous epic, the Tawnbow Coolnia. Rathcrohan was, at the very least, a very significant funerary complex by the Bronze Age, and the remains being excavated at Balakolya present an excellent opportunity to investigate the lives and deaths of a community within Rathcrohan's hinterland. At Balakolya, during Stage 1 testing, AMS archaeologists revealed post holes, possible cremation pits, and curvilinear slot trenches representing possible roundhouses. It became apparent that a Bronze Age settlement site had been located. In this film, we will be looking more closely at the approximately 20 cremation pits that were identified at Balakulia. And We found these cremation pits um, in the testing and then it went to stage two. And stage two is where the archaeologists clean back the site and they reveal the features that are on the site. So after stage two, to protect the cremated bone and to protect the cremations, we had rolled out plastic over the cremations. So in stage three, the weather was bad over the winter, so we had to get pony tunnels in. And the pony tunnels covered the cremation pits. Because it was windy we had to put sandbags on the outside and we had to stop the water from coming in on top of the features so there was quite a bit of work on that. But they worked quite well because we were able to work continuously through all the bad weather and we had three storms so they worked very very well. With the pythons we were able to work away inside in a kind of a controlled environment. Once we got the tunnels and we placed the tunnels over the cremations, we took the plastic off and we were able to work then inside in the tunnels. Once the plastic was drawn back, the team carefully cleaned the surface by hand to expose the outlines of the cremation pits. So once we cleaned back the cremations, we had a nice outline of the cremations, we planned them and photographed them and then we were able to excavate the cremations. Pre-excavation recordings included detailed drawings and context record sheets. Digital pickups using GPS location of apparent limits and later section points on the cremation pits are surveyed in at various stages during each excavation. The cremation pits were excavated using half sections, which means that one half of the pit was dug out initially, detailed recordings were made, and then the rest of the pit was excavated and recorded. The composition, stratigraphic relationships, and interpretation of all contexts is documented at all points during the excavations. And on excavating them we saw that there was a top layer, a kind of a brown redeposit material that was sealing the cremated pit. So what we think this was, when they were digging out the pits, they dug out the soil and they left the soil to one side and then they burnt the bone off site and brought this bone in with the charcoal and they packed it down onto the base of the cremation pit and then they pulled the redeposit soil back over the cremation pit again. And this is what we're finding. We found the stratigraphy within the pits was the upper layer was a nice brown layer and then there was a charcoal rim of charcoal and that had a fair amount of cremated bone. Just a token deposit we think it wouldn't have been the full human, just a little deposit because the cremated bone was of a low enough quantity but we'll find that out when it goes to sampling and that'll be all done back in strokes or back in the office. 
The stakeholders were associated with the pits and what we think they may have been little markers just to identify where the graves were at the time they were being excavated. And some of them had stakeholders to the side and others had stakeholders within the features themselves. So we're just kind of an early stage of that. We have to give it one more clean and we'll see how many stakeholders are there. But there's definitely some sort of grave markers or some kind of posts going on too, just as like signposts within the cremations but we have to do further work on that. At this stage now, we're nearly finished the cremations, excavating them, we sampled them all, we took 100% sampling from all the cremations, and what that means is we fully excavate the contents of the pits, put them into buckets, we put labels outside the buckets so we know where the, the buckets come from, and then that goes away for analysis, and we can do different things with that then. In the coming weeks, the contents of the buckets will be sieved. Sieving is done to recover paleo-environmental remains, as well as any charcoal, human bone, or artefacts that may be present. These materials will then be studied by different specialists, and the results of their findings will shed further light on the cremation processes and contemporary burial practices. With the cremation pits carefully excavated and fully recorded, the team now turn their full attention to the remains of the Bronze Age roundhouses and nearby burnt mounds uncovered on the Balakulya prehistoric settlement. <laughs>